Hi friends, welcome to Storytime with Miss Green. Today we're going to continue with our taking care of the earth theme and I'm going to tell you a little bit about garbage and recycling. So we're going to read Fly Guy Presents Garbage and Recycling written by Ted Arnold. Now I know we've had a <clears throat> story about this already so this will help maybe give us a little bit more information and I can talk to you a little bit more about it. Garbage and recycling, here we go. A boy had a pet fly named Fly Guy. Fly Guy could say the boy's name, Buzz. I have a special treat for you, Fly Guy, Buzz said. Today we are visiting a landfill. Yes. Fly Guy loved garbage. He and Buzz couldn't wait to learn more about trash. Trash from homes, schools, and businesses is called municipal solid waste. There are, here are some examples of things that make up municipal so solid waste. Paper, leaves and grass, metal, plastic and glass. A city sanitation department or a local garbage company is responsible for collecting, recycling, and getting rid of these materials. In the United States, people throw away over 250 million tons of trash each year, more than any other country. So you might have a garbage truck that comes to pick up your trash, or your family might just take their trash to the dump over in Hastings. to get rid of your trash somehow, right? Landfills. Now those are places where garbage is discarded or gotten rid of. A landfill starts with a big hole in the ground covered with soil and a plastic liner. This keeps waste from getting into the soil and groundwater underneath it. Giant landfill compactors crush and pack down trash. Then the garbage is covered with a tiny layer of soil and over time, tiny organisms called bacteria eat the trash, causing it to decompose or break down. The bacteria in a landfill also, also cause several gases to form, including one very stinky gas called hydrogen sulfide. This gas smells like rotten eggs. It is so stinky, humans can detect it even in tiny amounts. That's why trash sometimes stinks. A fly can smell garbage from almost five miles away. Nobody's here, guys. Shh, Pace, come here. Sanitation departments and garbage companies around the country collect waste using 130,000 garbage and recycling trucks. These trucks take the waste to landfills and recycling plants. A typical garbage truck can haul around 20,000 pounds of trash. Some garbage trucks use diesel fuel. Others run on natural gas created from landfills. Natural gas is less expensive and better for the environment. Many trucks have mechanical arms. Controls inside the trucks are used to grab, lift, and dump containers of trash into the top of the truck. Other garbage trucks are rear loaders. This means that garbage is dumped into the back of the truck and then a shovel pushes the trash further inside. The crunching sound you hear is the trash being squished to make more room. So here's a little mechanical arm picking up the garbage um, bin and dumping it into the back. And on this one, Maybe there are some guys on either side or some girls and they jump down, they grab your trash bags, they dump them into the back of the truck, and then this thing pushes the trash forward and kind of squishes it. If we were at school, um, BTI trash garbage truck over in um, the Brewerton area, usually comes every year with a garbage truck and we get to see a whole very cool demonstration. 
So let me see if I can find a video of that from last year's class. And if I can, I will post that for you guys to see, okay? Because we usually get the garbage truck to come to school every year. Sanitation workers, so those are the garbage men and garbage women, have very dangerous jobs. Lifting heavy containers of trash can cause injuries. Workers might touch something harmful in the trash, such as broken glass or dangerous chemicals. And sanitation workers often ride standing on the outside of their trucks. So a crash with another vehicle could be very dangerous. But they also have a uniform to help keep them safe. It's usually bright colors, maybe orange. They wear gloves and boots for protection and their outermost layer of clothing helps make them more visible to other drivers. So look at all of these people who are collecting your trash. They're wearing orange to make sure that they can be seen. What happens when there's no more space inside of a landfill? Well, it's covered up and it's closed. And then sometimes the land is turned into a park or a golf course, or even a ski resort. But what happens to the garbage that doesn't get sent to the landfill? Do you know? Here in the United States, most of it gets sent to a recycling center or turned into soil through composting. And remember, at a recycling center, so recycle means to use something to, to, to take Sorry, to take something and to turn it into something new. We recycle it. In the United States, state and local governments make their own recycling laws. Starting a recycling program can be expensive, but recycling can save money and the environment in the long run. Right now, 25 states have laws that say certain electronics called e-waste, maybe like TVs, old Xboxes <clears throat> must be recycled. Laws like these are important because many electronics contain toxic materials that can be harmful when they end up in a landfill. Most metal, paper, plastic, and glass can be recycled. Rubber tires and lead acid batteries used in vehicles can be recycled too but some items like light bulbs and dishes cannot be recycled. Plastics like potato chip bags and plastic wrap cannot be recycled either. E-waste must be carefully recycled through special programs. Televisions, phones, refrigerators, those are all examples of e-waste. So we can recycle metal, paper, plastic, glass, not bags that chips are in, not plastic wrap, not light bulbs or dishes. Hmm. It's good that we can recycle lots of things. When a truck arrives at the recycling center, all of its contents are dumped out. Then recyclables are moved to a conveyor belt. Everything is separated and trash that was mixed in by mistake is removed. Things are then crushed and tied up into huge cubes called bales. Then the bales are transported to a different plant for processing before being made into new products. So look at, these are cans. They're dumped out. They're cleaned on a conveyor belt. What's happening here? Oh, they're being sorted. They're crushed. And then they're sent somewhere else. It's quite a process to recycle. Let's follow a bale of plastic bottles to a plastic recycling facility. A forklift breaks up the bale and drops it onto a conveyor belt. The bottles are pre-washed and sorted by color. Next, the bottles are washed and heated to remove labels and bottle caps. The bottles are ground into flakes and then they're washed again and dried. Then these little tiny flakes of plastic are melted and made into tiny plastic pellets. And then they're used to make new things like carpets and jackets and park benches. New plastic bottles can be made too. That's a lot of stuff. Here is a page about composting. Natural materials like fruits and vegetables eggshells and leaves take up a lot of space in landfills. 
And those can be recycled through composting. So it's taking your fruits and vegetable scraps that you have at home and putting them in a special place outside and they kind of just collect and collect right here. It's a picture of a composting bin. And then eventually, friends, that turns, it breaks down and it you can use it for soil to plant a new garden. Lots of people compost in their backyards. Unfortunately, some trash does not get disposed of in the right way, and it ends up in lakes, rivers, and oceans. That's water pollution. When plastic trash ends up in the ocean, it breaks down into these little confetti-sized pieces. And ocean currents have pushed millions of these plastic bits together in one part of the Pacific Ocean called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And here's a water sample from that spot. So see that right there? See all of that little tiny, those little tiny flecks? Those are all little tiny pieces of plastic that they collected from the ocean. Do you think that that's good for the animals that live in the ocean? Not at all. Birds and marine animals think the plastic is food and they try to eat it. The plastic can make the animals very sick. If you think, if you like to eat fish, do you guys like to eat fish? You might find yourself eating our ocean's plastic trash too. That is so sad. That's why it is so important to make sure that all of your trash goes in the right spot and that you recycle so we can help save the animals that live in the ocean. To keep trash out of landfills, follow the three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. I hope that you guys are enjoying our Earth Day unit and celebrating the Earth and taking care of the Earth. Um, Earth Day is coming up soon, I believe. Is it April 22nd, maybe? So hopefully on that day, you can enjoy the Earth and help maybe keep it clean. Buzz and Fly Guy pledge to do their part to make our planet a better, healthier place. We know just what to do to reduce, reuse, and recycle, Buzz reminded Fly Guy as they headed home. They could not wait till their next field trip. And here he is throwing his drink right in the recycling. Boys and girls, I hope that you learned something about recycling or garbage today. Um, I want you to talk to uh, somebody at home about what you learned and maybe how your tell us how your family recycles. You can tell us how if your family has a composting bin or how your family takes care of their trash. Does the trash company come pick it up or do you take it to the dump yourselves? Let me know. Let Mrs. Messina know and let Mrs. Ma know. Bye for now.